good morning afternoon or evening depending on where you're tuning in from um, I did mention earlier today that I'm going to be doing several different testimonies these are deliverance testimonies I want to share them with all of you actually the Lord wants me to share them because they're they're very powerful um, I'm almost positive that there's a lot of people um, that need to hear them as well um, so I just pray that the right people are brought to this channel to hear this powerful testimony and that it touches and changes you forever and that you, you don't walk away the same in Jesus name you walk away better you walk away healed you walk away delivered you walk away convicted whatever it is I just pray that the Lord does a mighty work in you just by hearing this testimony faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and the Lord spoke in this testimony so I met with the sister in Christ we have probably met I want to say about four or five times now but we talked several times before actually meeting for deliverance um, and you know she told me some things about her background I knew that she had been uh, badly abused by her father um, and that was going to be the Lord's focus on this particular call um, as soon as we started the call he wanted to deal with a stronghold of hatred that she had towards her father so the Holy Spirit revealed that there was a stronghold of hatred that she's had towards her father for um, his his abuse verbal abuse physical abuse emotional abuse and sexual abuse that has been repressed that she can't even remember so this is what ended up happening as I'm sitting there and he's revealing that there's this stronghold and she's acknowledging that there's some pretty pretty raw feelings towards him and and that she knew for a fact that there's bitterness and resentment because he was vicious towards her and he was brutal in his abuse this is what the Lord revealed was underneath that stronghold of hatred the spirit of bitterness, resentment, disgust, shame, guilt, regret, disappointment, anger, rage, animosity, wrath, vengeance, retaliation, spite, malice, sadism, and slander. So before I go any further, he revealed all of these. And what needs to happen during a deliverance is a strong man. It says in the Bible, a strong man needs to be bound and his goods plundered in Jesus' name before you can deal with anything under the strong man. Because the strong man is like at the top of a demonic hierarchy, right? There's a chain of command. The strong man is at the top and all the lower ranking spirits are underneath and the strong man controls them. The strong man gets them to manifest at different times, causing all kinds of problems. This one to, was to keep her in a perpetual state of hatred, murder in her heart and unforgiveness towards her father. So we started to talk about some of the things that she remembers because the Lord really wanted her to participate in the deliverance, even though she was having a hard time recollecting to really dig deep and try to reflect back on some of these events because the actual spirit was tied, some of them, to particular events. So it's a lot spirit is a lot easier to get that spirit to go when you know what invited the spirit in. So she would tell me about, you know, different incidences and she said that there was one time in particular she had asked him for some rollerblades and he had bought some for her cousins and when she asked him for some, she actually got cursed out and beaten for it. So she said that these were regular occurrences and as we were talking, the Lord revealed that that 
spirit of sadism a sadistic spirit sadism is when somebody actually enjoys seeing another person suffering and she said she felt many times like her father was somehow enjoying being abusive somehow enjoying being abusive like he 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 liked what he was doing to her he liked the the control maybe behind it so I took this to the Lord and I said very quickly, Lord, how do you want her to deal with this unforgiveness in her heart? Because unforgiveness is a legal permission for demonic oppression to stay. It has to be dealt with. So this is what he gave me word for word to have her pray Lord, I don't remember much of my childhood, but I know what's I know you know what's in my heart. Reveal how these things gained access to me. Reveal their origins. Set me free of all this murder in my heart towards my father. Take the emotional pain and the trauma that came with these actions. I ask for your healing in my mind, will, emotions, and heart. Make me new. Take the stony places of my heart and make them flesh. I forgive him. I let this go. I release all my hurt and everything I just renounced to you. Take it away. Help me to let it go. Fill my heart with mercy and forgiveness. Thank you for doing what I never could. After she finished, the Lord asked me, the Lord instructed me to ask her if she felt like she meant that or if she thought like she meant that. To which she replied, yes. And the Lord confirmed that she didn't. I said, okay, Lord, how do you want to proceed now? This is what he told me to do next. He had me have her pray for her father, these exact words. Pray that he will come to know me. And have a relationship with me. Pray for me to deliver him from the trauma of a loveless household. Pray for me to remove the hatred he has for himself and the people responsible for hurting him. Pray for all the bitterness, resentment, offense, and all forms of murder to be removed from his heart. Pray for me to heal the way he sees himself and to silence the slanderous and mocking voices from his past that still speak to him to this day. Pray for me to break all curses that keep him in bondage and to show him a love he never received in my name. After she prayed this prayer, the Lord had me have her repeat that prior prayer lord i don't remember much of my childhood and she went through it again and this time the holy spirit pulled from a deep place within her where she was able to empathize with her father after hearing some of the things that he went through she was able to empathize with her her father and you could hear a compassion that wasn't there the time before and that unforgiveness broke and all of those spirits under that stronghold of hatred left one after another after another until they were all gone in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ and as if that wasn't enough the Holy Spirit led this entire deliverance and had her go uh, through one of her biggest disappointments as a child. Now keep in mind that she had a very, very hard time recollecting or even remembering these parts of her childhood. So again, the Holy Spirit had to help her. The Lord was helping her to pull from a very deep place, a place that she wouldn't have been able to go without his help. So she started going down this path of recollecting some things. But there was one in particular. There was this string of spirits toward the end. 
uh, they didn't they didn't leave right away and the Lord brought up you know there is a particular situation that is tied to the spirit of sadism um, and because the act itself was so uh, motivated by the spirit of sadism that those following emotions which were wrath vengeance retaliation spite malice sadism and slander actually no i take that back wrath was not involved so vengeance retaliation spite malice sadism and slander were tied to one specific event one and no matter how much she tried to get back to that place, she's like, I don't, I don't know. Was it this? Was it this? And the Lord was confirming, no, it wasn't. No, it was not. And then he revealed the problem. Because God is that good. So as she's trying to pull from a place and she's, she's remembering some things. So praise God for that. She's like, I, I really don't know. And then all of a sudden, the Lord revealed that not only did she have a stronghold of forgetfulness, but that it was a curse and a spirit. A strong man, a curse and a spirit of forgetfulness. And underneath that stronghold of forgetfulness, forgetfulness, were the following spirits, absent-mindedness, carelessness, daydreaming, incognizance, ignorance, unobservancy, obliviousness, distraction, preoccupancy, unawareness, inattentiveness, amnesia, which was a curse and a spirit, a generational curse and a spirit. So that was broken, all of it. The stronghold was broken, broken, but the Lord was painting a picture for her because as she was growing up, she had all kinds of learning disabilities. And she was always made to feel like she was stupid and like she just wasn't getting it and that she was slow to comprehend material and things of that sort. And she would get incredibly frustrated and people would accuse her of being oblivious or somewhere off in a distant land. She did say that daydreaming was a problem for her. And all of this the devil was using to take her further and further away from God. Because how many of us know that if you're constantly distracted, if you have a hard time paying attention or keeping an awareness, or if your mind is absent-minded, where you can't you're you're it's it's just kind of going off on a tangent when you're trying to focus and trying to concentrate it's really hard to meditate on the word of God and the word of God is our weapon in the armor of Ephesians 6 and Satan knows that so he came after her mind pretty hard and also these memories were so repressed that the only way that she would ever be healed from the hurts of her past would be to recollect them. And with all of this in a stronghold in her mind, a demonic fortress trying to keep her in bondage so that she could never pull up these memories or heal from them. But greater is he that lives in us, who lives in us, than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. So that was broken. And when that was broken, she said she, she started to feel lighter. Not only did she start to feel lighter, but she said that she, she, felt, she felt better, just happier. Happier. There was, a, there was more of an alertness when she was speaking. And so she also had to go down a journey where she started uh, renouncing false religion, 
false doctrine, legalism, false prophecy, false teaching, seducing spirits, and double-mindedness. All of that that I just mentioned invited in a double-minded spirit. I don't know if you know what a double-minded spirit is, but it's actually, it's like an octopus, right? The double-minded spirit gets its tentacles onto your mind and can turn your head in this direction or that. And the Bible says it this way, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So if you don't know the truth, it's e easy to be swayed this way and that with no sense of direction. Oh, well, that sounds good, so I'm going to go with that. Well, that sounded like the truth too. And then all of a sudden there's error and there's confusion. This is why we need to make the Word of God, the Bible, our primary source. And if you don't know the Word of God and you don't know the Bible, Stay off the internet, please, please, because um, the Bible talks about in the last days that many will fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. And that's exactly what it's talking about is making TikTok, making Instagram and making YouTube your Bible or listening to these prophets who are leading you down this rabbit trail that's only going to put you in a state of seven times worse than the first reprobate delusion. Because that is exactly what is happening right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on things that I've seen where people have reached out to me and told me some of the things they were going through and they were given over to a strong delusion for choosing a lie, which is what the Bible says will happen. However, what I'm finding out is even when somebody is in that reprobate state, which reprobate means rejected by God, literally, but if they if they cry out or they want him that bad that they're trying to seek and search for him even in that state they're still trying to get back to him clawing their way back to him he'll send help because God is so merciful he is full of mercy i can't even fathom it sometimes another two things that she was delivered from is timidity and shyness Amen. And the Lord has already started sending her assignments. Um, and she had some deliverance from some things that were actually keeping her from articulating what she wanted to say or withholding, holding back, um, you know, kind of like uh, passive aggression, that kind of thing where she just wouldn't say anything because she didn't want to start an argument. But now she's starting to speak out. So she's already, I think she talked to about four people and shared with them her testimony so far. And now she's going to be able to tell them what happened. Whew, hallelujah. Yesterday. So another thing she, she was dealing with. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So the, the Lord was, um, he was adamant. That he did not want her watching any more online content until her discernment is sharpened and she is more knowledgeable in what the word says. So that's a warning to anybody out there right now. You got those itching ears. You're just kind of running after, you know, whatever sounds good. You have to be careful because if you start getting, taking heed to seducing spirits and coming into agreement with uh, people speaking out of a Leviathan spirit, pe people speaking out of a Jezebel spirit, people speaking out of a Python spirit, you are, you are coming into agreement with that spirit by believing those lies. So the Bible needs to be your source. The Bible is where we are sanctified. The word sanctified means set apart and made holy. This is how we are able to practice righteousness, righteousness, which the Bible tells us to do. We're supposed to be practicing righteousness. How do we do that? By being hearers and doers of the word. We get in there. We meditate on it. We contemplate its meaning. We study it. We take some time going over maybe just one, two, three verses at a time. What does this mean? How can I apply it or put it into practice in my daily 
life? What, what am I supposed to learn from this? What can I take away from this? The Bible is not a, a book so you can just walk around and impress everyone with your head knowledge. Jesus is the Bible made flesh. He is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. If you want to cultivate and build on a relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Bible is where you should start. Amen. God bless you all. I hope you have a good night. In Jesus' name.